This week's video is going to be a review about this new light fixture that's going to be released later this year. This is by Kessel. It's the AP700. What I wanted to do was have it flown out to me very quickly before Macna. Let me kind of put it through its paces, kind of give you some information up front. So when you're at the show, you'll kind of have a heads up. If you're not attending, this should still help you if you're trying to decide on an aquarium light and see if this might be what you're interested in. So let's take a look. The AP700 is an all-in-one fixture and it comes in a nice well-packed box. There's only 25 of these in the US right now that went to the distributors. And inside is the light fixture itself. There is the ballast right here. There is a USB cable for connecting it for updates of software. The power cord from the light fixture that connects to this cord right here. And of course the power supply cord that looks like a computer cable. And I'm sure you'd have plenty of length if you needed to set it up. Let me take everything out of the box. There's even a warranty card. All right, what I did was I kind of cleaned up a little bit and I've got the ballast plugged in. While the light was out of the package, I went ahead and I weighed the fixture with its cord and this entire fixture right here is 4.8 pounds. So it's not very heavy hanging from a ceiling if that's the way you want to go. You can buy a hanging kit separately and it's a very simple wire system that comes with the little cables that screw right into where these screws are right now and I'll show you that in a little bit and of course anchors to take it up into the ceiling or preferably, I mean, I always like to screw into a stud in the ceiling or a joist rather than just have sheetrock hold it up, but they're really light, five pounds. You divide that across two of these, that's two and a half pounds per side. That shouldn't be a problem at all. Uh, the plug just goes into this other fixture right here. I mean, this other outlet and it's connected. I'll move this out of the way a little bit. And we have a power button, instant light. How cool is that? Now there's all there on the front here are different settings to increase intensity or to decrease it. And you can change your colors too by touching the pad right here on the front. But the beauty of this fixture, the excitement that everyone's having for it is that you'll be able to use this with an iPhone or with an Android. It's an app coming out for it that's still in production. As soon as the app is released, the light goes, it becomes available across the nation. And this is being released in the US first. So I'm gonna blind you for a second. And that wasn't even full intensity. I believe I turned that down. Okay. Is that better? <laughs> now the fan is drawing air in as far as I can tell. I can feel the air blowing out of these vents on the ends. And this light fixture here is designed to fit over different size aquariums. For example, on my aquarium, which is seven feet long and three feet wide, if I were to go with this light, I would have to put them perpendicular. So the tank is long, I'd put one, two, three, and that would light my reef. The idea is that this right here would light my reef like a metal halide is doing right now. This light fixture uses 195 watts. Not bad. In the old days, we were looking at 250 watts to 400 watt metal halide bulbs over our reef tanks. And for this one to replace the fixture and be less than a 250 watt bulb would be great. It can be hung at different heights. You have choices, of course, for depending on the size of your tank. If your tank is about 36 inches long and maybe as much as 24 inches wide, then you would keep it about five to seven inches off the water. If your tank is longer and is 48 inches by 24 inches, for example, like a 120 gallon reef, then you would have this between 15 and 18 inches off the water, leaving some space so it can spread a little bit wider. It's not hot to the touch. It's not anything. It's as if it wasn't turned on at all. So obviously after it's been on for a while, it might warm up. If it's inside a canopy, it could warm up as well. So you wanna make sure that your canopy has a vent in the back to let this air get out. Uh, remember, it's drawing fresh air in and cooling itself so that it won't overheat. As I mentioned before, it comes with a one-year warranty. If you have any problem at all, you let Kessel know. The way I understand it, if the, there's a problem with the light, they will send you another one and hold your credit card on deposit and you can ship back the one that you had a problem with. That's the way I've understood how it works. And that's pretty awesome because you get a light over your tank much more quickly than if you had to send it in, wait for it to be repaired, and then get it back. Now, I also want to show you these other Kessel lights. I've got one, two more, just to compare the LED size. I thought that was kind of interesting because people are familiar with the Tuna Blue, which is a smaller one, and then there's like a medium one. Uh, different wattages, different size uh, LEDs. And then there's this one here that's pretty big. So what I'm gonna do now is film the three so you can see side by side what they look like.
This is the Tuna Blue, model 160, but it's actually a 40 watt LED fixture. You can see a very small LED. This is its bigger brother. Uh, this is model 360, but it uses 90 watts. So now you can kind of see side by side. They pretty much are about the same size in the center of the LED. And then if you look at this fixture, you can see the si oh. <laughs> if you look at this fixture, you can see how it's a different size entirely. It's much larger. I think it's pretty impressive. I find it interesting to see how things are built for our aquarium hobby that change the size based on the aquarium. So this would be good for a smaller tank that's like 18 inches by 18 inches. A lot of nano tanks and little nano cubes, they like to have these set up. If you're setting up a frag tank at a trade show, this would be nice on a gooseneck system hanging off the back of the tank to light your corals. You have knobs on the top to control the lighting. This one here is a little bit bigger for a larger tank, maybe a 24 by 24, like the anemone cube might be ideal for this one. And then of course you've got the AP 700 that is designed for the bigger tanks. I'm gonna say 55 gallons and up. You know, I mentioned this for a 60 because it's a cube, but this one's a little bit wider. And I think if I were to put, you know, this is pretty much the width of my cube. So I'd have lights on the sides. I'd much rather have the light in the center of the reef. So I would recommend this for a bigger tank, like a longer tank that's about 48 inches long, 36 to 48. Uh, if you end up with a eight foot tank, you would need two. If you went with a wider tank, like mine I was talking about before, then you would have three of them. Or possibly if you decided you wanted more, you could go with four. Uh, it really comes down to location, height off the water, and most importantly, how long you run them each day. And I think that is probably the biggest problem that a lot of new hobbyists have is that they just don't know how long to run their lights and it's especially complicated when it comes to LED fixtures because these put out a lot of intensity and they can really punch through the water and in the in the and what happens is these corals get bleached or cooked cooked uh, they get their zoanthelli baked right out of their system because the light is just too much too long too intense uh, I talk about lighting and how long you should run your lights and what duration and what about high noon in a totally different video. I definitely recommend you watch it if you haven't seen it already. But I think that you are starting, I think the overall, most people are starting to get that and it's just a matter of figuring out what's right for you. So the next thing I want to do is I want to go ahead and take my camera and point it at the reef where I've got a 400 watt bulb shining down right now. And then I want to go ahead and rig this to hang under that metal halide and turn it off. And we'll take a look at the tank and see how it looks by comparison using this over the 400 gallons uh, livestock. I'm going to do it over the section where the LPS corals are, uh, the end where the anemone is and all the clownfish that you're familiar with mostly. And we'll see what you think. And hopefully it's interesting. So it's going to take me a few minutes to get everything hooked up. I have to connect these cables. And uh, these are going to be sold separately. I think I mentioned that before. They are probably going to retail $45 for a kit. I don't know if that's $45 for one and $45 for another or if a kid is both, it's probably both. I'm just not positive. Also, um, if you wanted to hook this up to an Apex or to a digital aquatics, there'll be a cable to let you do that. And finally, if you're not gonna hang it and you're trying to suspend it over the tank, there are some ports here on the end that would allow you to install a rail system that will be sold separately to have it sit on the tank for those clean uh, rimless systems so many people like right now where you can go ahead and just have just a real thin bar to like lock it in place. But I think in that case, you will not be able to pick the height. You'll be set with whatever the manufacturer gives you. And if you need to hire up, that might be a problem for you. So you need to determine what's best for your system. Just about done. As you saw, I removed the screws, and you can just hand screw these right into the fixture again. And then tighten these little tiny threaded nuts on the top, I believe would keep it secure. Yeah, it's a way to remove the cable after it's installed in the light, I believe, if you had to ever change it out. So now your light fixture is ready to hang, nice and secure. One thing I didn't mention before, after I got all this connected, is that there is a power light on the side to let you know that it's on. And there's the obvious word Wi-Fi with a little light. It's not on right now, it's not enabled. But once you go and you download the app, 
to talk to your light, you'll be able to program it through Wi-Fi. And that couldn't be more convenient. Let's go film the tank. All right, so here we are. This is with a metal halide, 400 watt bulb, and some VHOs. I'm not going to turn off the VHOs for this test. So I'm just going to show you what the tank looks like. We'll go ahead and move this guy out of the way. It's my feeding clip that keeps all my fish fed. They're probably wondering what's going on with cameras and lighting. All right, so you can kind of see what this looks like. I'm going to hit stop. I'm going to show you what the lights look like, and then we'll set it up again, and you'll take a look at it with LEDs and see what you think. And see what I think. These are my lights that hang over the 400 gallon, and there are three metal halides that are 400 watts each. And they're actually right now all in 20K mode. So everything's crazy blue, which kind of gives you that color that you guys just seem to adore so much. I seriously can't believe my luck. So I thought, well, I'm gonna suspend it, but I need it to be 15 inches off the water, and mathematically it had to be like about here. But these cables are crazy long, and they have to hang from something. So I took the pendant out, and when I was trying to take it out, I realized it was like 20 and a quarter long. So is this light. So I was actually able to just put it right in my light rack, like it was designed to fit there four years ago, and it works perfectly. So let's go ahead and roll the light rack back into place, make sure I don't do anything crazy now, and turn it on. You know, the rack's way lighter with a five pound light instead of a 20 pound light. I just went ahead and rerouted the wires over the top of the light rack just to make sure nothing bad happens. Get all those cables and everything out of the way, push it back into place. There's a piece of acrylic under the light in case it tries to jump out, which would be horrible, but it's just a test. Okay. That looks like about the right spot over the reef. Let's move the camera and take another look at the reef with the lights on. Aziz, light! Okay, that's maximum intensity. First impression, it seems a little bit darker in my tank. Definitely very blue, more blue than my 20K lighting on the uh, 400 watt bulbs on the rest of the reef. And it is up high. I think I would probably want it down about two inches lower, but that's not as easy to rig over my system without taking a chance of splashing that light into the water. It was super awesome that it fit into my light rack and let me do a test. Um, we're gonna take a look from a couple of angles and see what you think, but this tank is uh, 30 inches tall. Seventeen inches from the LED to the water, and twenty-three from the sand to the surface. So forty inches. That's a long run deep. But the corals are popping. It's really pretty, um, and I think I ran it at maximum. Once you have the app to control the different programs and pick your different settings, that will help. But these corals are definitely popping right now. Of course, I like different color spectrums, so I kind of like to see what it looks like with a change. I'm gonna see if I can change the lights. Not that the phone's gonna pick it up, but I adjusted the color up a couple of points and already the deeper blue is gone and it's a lot more closer to what I see with the rest of the tank. So I'll go ahead and pivot this so you can kind of see. The color is pretty much uniform to a metal halide. The 20K bulbs that I'm using are the Twin Arcs by Reef Bright. So I'll go ahead and bump it again and we'll see if we can get closer to more of a white color, because I'm very curious what it can do. So this is kind of the white light that I actually prefer. I like to see my reef under a light, white, sunlight type of look. I know everyone wants the crazy colors, and I complain about it online pretty often, but in the end, when you go in the ocean, there's no crazy azure light out there shining down on the coral. Matter of fact, it's hard to find zoanthids when you're diving off the coast of Florida, at least it was for me. 
I saw lots of rock, I saw lots of sand, I saw fish, plenty of gorgonians, but I went hunting and could not find zoanthids because they didn't have the crazy glow that we're so spoiled with. So this is kind of more realistic to me. And I wouldn't mind looking at a reef like this. I still get the shimmer that I like, and I'm not seeing that disco ball effect that bothers me from a lot of different light fixtures on the market. And I'm sure that's because the light is a pinpoint light versus a light that is uh, got lots of different LEDs on it. Let me go ahead and switch it down while the video is live. It turns out my microphone cord is just long enough to do this. So you can kind of see it change live. It's very easy to change. It's just a, a finger touch. You're not even pushing a button. So that's all the way down to crazy, like full moon blue. And then we'll come back up to what I like. And so let's say we had the super white light and we wanted to decrease the intensity. It's still appealing. And if you're not trying to grow SPS corals, you could probably have a medium range of lighting over your tank and not have it super bright because like, you know, you need to acclimate corals to get used to the lighting. Pretty simple to use. I, the program button, I don't quite understand it. I'm sorry. If I push it, it just seems to switch to something blue. That might be moonlight phase. And when I touch it again, I can't tell the difference. <laughs> I just seem to be stuck. So that's all I know right now. The app is gonna be critical. I think that's why the light fixture isn't available quite yet because they want you to have full control of this light the moment it comes out. So how much does it cost? $8.95 is the bottom line price you're going to find anywhere. It could be as much as $9.49 online or in stores. That's the uh, recommended price. So this light would be good for medium to large tanks. The smaller tanks, you're going to want a smaller fixture that hits that smaller footprint. But this one, like I said, can go 48 long by 36 wide. That's a pretty good or I'm sorry, by 24 wide. That's a pretty good spread. Uh, they will start coming out later this year. Uh, right now, pre-orders have begun. So if you are looking online and you're trying to find who's got it for sale, you can start placing your order now. And as soon as they are actually released, you'll be getting yours first. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. And remember, this hobby is supposed to be fun.